Hey guys, welcome to part three of this series going behind the scenes of a documentary shoot on location in San Diego, California. This film is about Jose, a former soldier and triple amputee and his journey to heal mentally and physically through surfing. If you missed it, in part one I covered my pre-production process and part two was centered on the first stages of shooting, so if you missed those, I'd recommend going back and starting there. This video goes over the second half of the shoot and we'll look at how to conduct good interviews, how to get creative with your cinematography, how to treat your subjects with respect, and a whole bunch more. Like I said in the first two videos, this series was funded by The Art of Documentary, which I said last year was, in my opinion, the best online documentary film school out there. I ended up meeting Mark Bone from YouTube and his creative partner Michael who run the course, and instead of just making another standard review to think if I still think it's a good choice in 2023, they challenged me to put their methods to the test on a real shoot. I'm not being paid to talk about this and they aren't getting any input as to what I say here, so my opinions are all my own. If at the end you decide you want to take the course yourself, there's a link in the description to save some money and support this channel at the same time, but my intention here isn't to sell you anything. It's to figure out if I think it's the best option out there for documentary filmmakers and you can make up your own mind if it's the right fit for you. I'm pretty sure they're closing the enrollment for this cohort very soon, possibly even in the next few days or week or so, so you might want to jump on that if you're thinking about it. Okay, with that background info out of the way, I really hope you enjoy part three in this series because we had a blast making it. All right, it is 3.30 in the morning and we are actually going to the beach today to see Jose surf, but we've got a two and a half hour drive, so there's not much to see this morning. We're just gonna jump in the car, get straight to the beach, and then hopefully have some really nice light for this surfing scene. So after a two and a half hour drive, the sun is now up and we're at La Jolla Beach in San Diego. A lot of the camera work now is turned over to Eros, the co-director who's doing the underwater cinematography for today. I think they'll probably be surfing for a couple of hours and we're gonna grab as much B-roll, detail shots, and then hopefully some long lens action shots as well. So we're gonna try and get some really low angle shots and by far my favorite thing or one of my favorite things about this tripod is that you can get like two inches off the ground. So anything that makes your life easier is really valuable. This would take a serious amount of effort and time with a normal tripod. So great quality of life booster. Yes, yes. 
All right, so it's been a super long day. We started at, I think, three o'clock in the morning or I was awake at 2.30. And we're finishing off with kind of an emotionally intense scene uh, where Jose's in a lot of pain and his wife, Lisette, is going to massage him, basically. Pretty intimate and sensitive moments. So we wanted to create some lighting that was a little reflective of that, you know, that darkness, that moodiness. But it's nighttime now and the overhead lights are just orange and not gonna work at all. So we're blasting a 120D onto the window through a Fresnel mount and it's kind of creating this film noir, super moody look. It looks like the middle of the day, but it's a, it's a pretty cool effect. So I think it fits well with the scene and the mood we're trying to capture. So we're gonna wrap up this last bit and then call it a day because it's been a super long one. Why'd you have to leave me? Yeah, my life done changed. Who would have thought that? Damn, you never stayed. Feeling the change, all in myself, my day. Turning a page, I'm trying to paint my days. I'm starting to face, I'm starting to face my face. But I love my pace, I love my pace, I love my pace. Fall, it was a benefit, cause I've been working. Okay, so we just wrapped our final scene of the night. It was really great. Before we leave and go to sleep, we're gonna spend another hour at the end of the day setting up the interview location for tomorrow morning. I guess when you're looking for places to do interviews, I think one of the first things I like to do is ask the people if there's a room that they think, you know, a room in their house or in the location that they think really represents them. And for Jose, it's uh, this room, which is sort of where he keeps some of his hunting trophies and his surfing trophies. So we're going to do the interview setup in here. And because we have so much to shoot tomorrow, we just want to get it done the night before. Things to look for are a little bit of depth and the ability to control light. If you have no control over the light whatsoever, you know, you can do it, but if the light shifts a lot, it might kind of wreck your shot. So we really like this room for three reasons. The first and most important is because Jose feels comfortable here and it really represents him. The second one is there's only one window, so we can black it out with a big piece of duvetine and control the light all day. And three, because it's away from the main road at the front of the house, so it should be good for audio as well. So we're gonna get this done as quickly as possible and then get out of their house because we've taken up their entire day. I think we're gonna have to take down the small one. I think it looks pretty cool. I mean, there's only so many options, but I like the I like the vibe. Feels real busy. To, I think this needs to come down if possible. Yeah. And then we're gonna those bags will be out of the way, and these plastic things will be out of the way as well. Can you see it again? Yeah, that's way better. And we're gonna, we'll put a boom in over top here. Yep. And is it a second panic? Yeah, I think you should be like right here getting, cause he'll be looking here at me and you can get like a really dramatic and you can even stick the monopod. I think you should be able to get the monopod even around the corner if you want, but you can get like a really dramatic side or you could be there if you want, but then you're kind of yeah. stuck. Uh, if you take the shotgun off, Close, close, yeah. Okay, you can take that here. Take a take a picture. Just curious. I really like this. I think it's gonna be sweet. I think we need to set deck a little somehow, like you said. No, man, I like that. I don't think I need to go tighter than that. Okay. Yeah, this is gonna look good. Let's show the people at home the truth. I am exhausted. So it has been a super long day. Uh, we just spent a little while getting our basic interview frame dialed in and me and Eros are both pretty happy. We could tinker with this stuff forever. We're, we haven't dealt with all, any of the audio or anything like that, but it's been, I think a 17 hour day at this point. So we're gonna leave the lights set up. We know our frame, but it's time to call it a night. We'll come back in the morning and get all the fine details tuned in. Uh, but it's been a great day, but it is time for sleep. Okay, so I am just Going over the final interview questions, we're going to do Jose's master interview today. So I want to make sure, based on everything I've learned about him for the last couple of days, that we're on the right track and we're going to get everything we can out of him because we're not going to be able to come back. So we have 
pretty much one shot to get this stuff. Actually, if you haven't done a lot of interviews, AOD has some really great sections on how to do this. Something I like a lot that they stress is that you need to get to know people and keep them comfortable. That's why it's day three of this shoot and we've waited this long to actually do the interview. We wanted to make sure he knew us and that he felt good uh, really getting deep into his story because it's probably going to get pretty dark today. And if we had just come in after 10 minutes of knowing him, uh, that might have been pretty invasive. We also did a pre-interview call where I talked to him over Zoom and he got to know me a little bit. So that's something that I think if you don't have a lot of experience, AOD is really great. And there's actually, I think, also some advice on how to do different setups and different interview types and how to listen like a good interviewer. So interviewing is tough and it is a really fundamental part of this job. Most documentaries have interviews at the core of their storytelling. So I'll show you a bit about how I do it, um, but if you need a good primer on how it all works, uh, AOD does this really well. So we got our basic interview frame set up last night and now we have to just sort of do the fine tuning. So the, the set deck, if you will, we're gonna block out some windows, get the microphones in place. I actually really enjoy this part of the process, especially if we have time. If it's rushed, it can be a real panic, but today we've got quite a bit of time. There's no rush and it's gonna take our time and get this frame set up just how we want it. Once we're all set up, I think we bring Jose in, get the exact position, put down some tape markers for him to aim for. And then I think we should roll on the empty frame and have him wheel in. I think that'd be like an interesting intro to get into this shot. I'm not the greatest audio person in the world, but in general, I think you want to get it quite close to their face and about a 45 degree angle pointing down towards them. So once we get the frame set, sort of raise and lower this until we get it just out of frame. But yeah, if there's any audio people watching and I'm totally wrong, this is just what I've seen secondhand by watching sound people work. But uh, let, let me know in the comments if I'm doing this totally wrong. So we're just sort of fine tuning the lighting and everything. We're somewhat constricted by the space, but some general rules, at least the way I like to set up interviews is to have a bit of more of a contrasty look on one side of his face. There's no hard and fast rules to anything. You can do whatever you want. Generally though, if you're gonna have a more contrasty side, you wanna have the character looking towards the light. So whichever side of the camera the interviewer is gonna be sitting, have the key light on the same side. Yeah, in terms of exposure, we're going for a little bit of a darker look, but in general, you want to expose for the skin. The skin is the most important part of the whole thing. Um, you could use tools like false color if you want to get a reading. I'm not gonna go super deep into all that. That's a subject for another video. There's a ton out there on YouTube already, but expose for the skin. If it's too dark or too light, uh, it's gonna be really hard to work with in post. So normally you wanna try and get the camera lens about even with eyeline. That's a standard rule, kind of breaking these rules here. I'm gonna shoot from a slightly lower angle looking up. That's maybe not the most orthodox way to do it, but I think it, it's gonna give Jose a feeling of a little bit more power looking upwards at an angle. So this isn't the conventional rule of how to set up interview eyelines, but we're gonna go for an effect here rather than following a rule. What up? Okay, so you're gonna be kind of right here. All right, come a little bit closer and a little bit this way. Yeah. So your white, we need to change your white balance before we start. No, you're good there. So I think the only difference is I'm gonna be sitting here, so you're gonna be talking to me. That's kind of what we're, kind of what we're dealing with. Oh, okay. It looks pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. You like it? Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark, 
Here's what I'm thinking for when we roll, I'd like to actually include the part where you come in. So I'm gonna mark, I mean, I know you're pretty surgical with this guy. I'm gonna mark a couple of lines for you okay. to try and line up with. And then we'll do like when we actually start, you can. Give me kind of like a little L on this one. Okay. And yep. both kind of. Is it easy? What about if we did, you want your front wheels or you want like. The front wheels just because I'm able to see it. And okay. So like an album. Yeah, just yeah. now kind of like a little corner in a sense. Cool. All right. I'm just gonna check the audio, then we can take ten and do whatever we need to do and then we'll then we'll roll it. Jose's interview, it was super powerful and we went to some really deep places. Just wanted to take a second and talk about how if you're asking people to share really vulnerable parts of their life, then it's sort of on you as an interviewer to make sure that you have structured the interview in a sensitive way to lead them into these really difficult questions. You can't just hit people with hard stuff. You need to show them the respect of doing your research preparing your questions ahead of time to make sure you're asking good questions and give them the courtesy of looking them in the eye while you ask these difficult questions because it is an invasive process and if you don't do your job right, it can be really cold. Do your work, uh, like they say in AOD, do a pre-interview call, make sure you know what you're talking about and treat people like humans first and subjects second. Okay, so we are on our way to film the last scene of the day. Uh, it's gonna be Jose working out and training for surfing. I just wanna say one, one thing that when you're starting to film your own documentaries, I keep saying this word scene, and it's really important to try and think of your film in terms of a series of scenes. You don't just wanna aimlessly follow people. You wanna think of moments that are important to their story. And you know, I, I'm calling them scenes, but these are beats or, or moments that really speak to the larger story. So this scene with Jose in the gym is gonna to speak to his drive to overcome physical adversity and keep going anyways. And I think AOD, I believe it's in module two, has a bunch of these where Mark and Michael walk people through different scenes that they've shot and explain what they were thinking and why they made the choices they made. Um, so if you're struggling to figure out how to turn your documentary into a series of scenes, um, they're a really good resource. Okay, so on the way to the gym, I'm gonna sit in the front seat with Jose and ask him some more informal questions that we didn't cover during the interview. And a good tip is to try and bring information out of people while they're doing something. So it's not just all talking heads in your video. And driving, I found, is a really good one because people are focused on what they're doing and they don't think quite so carefully about everything they say. So you might end up getting some more honest and open answers than you would otherwise. So if you're trying to get more story information out and you don't want to do another sit down interview, think about um, trying to do mini interviews during things like driving or really anything where their mind is on something other than the questions you're asking. All right, what are we on our way to go do? We are about to go meet up with my trainer and train for certain. From the back seat, see me going by as we're passing the streets. Dim lights in her basement, dark leather jacket in my whiskey. Me and I can find. 
find a way to compromise and miss some looking in your eyes and I know we're leaving all the rules behind Welcome to the wild It's every man for himself Welcome to the wild I'm crazy No one wants you, no one else And I won't waste another hour Baby, you don't know your power I'll take you to the I don't want to die. I want to live more and more because I'm not done with surfing. I want to live more and more because I want to continue to get better at surfing. And the only way to get better is to continue to train, continue to be in the water, continue to just move. And I feel like the minute I would stop working out, the minute I would stop surfing, the minute I just stopped everything, I think that's when, when I will decide that I'm done with this world. Well, everybody wants you, but they can do what I do. Okay, so it is the last day of the shoot. We've already kind of gotten all the core elements of our story. So the interview and all the main verite scenes that we had planned. Today, we're gonna try and do the last sort of specialty shots. These are the ones with a lot of lighting design. We're gonna get a slider involved. So a lot of, a lot of setups and more artistic shots, but the main part of the story is done. So today is just a lot of tinkering and it should actually be really fun. There's like, in, a, in that, you know that Puffy Manfrotto backpack? Mm -hmm. There's like a tool pouch in there. Oh boy. Okay, so the first setup this morning, we're gonna try and do some really moody details of Jose's tattoos and the extent of the scarring on his body. And we're gonna use a slider for that. I don't use a lot of sliders normally. Um, this is sort of a specialty thing um, and like I mentioned earlier, we got this one from Zipon or Zeppon uh, to try out. So we're gonna get it all set up and then start controlling the lighting uh, and see how we can make this shot work. So right off the bat, one of the things that stands out most is these weird little extendy crab arms. Uh, whenever I've used little sliders like this in the past, one of the problems is as soon as the camera gets over to the end, the whole thing tends to shift and the ball head can't hold the weight. And I've tried all sorts of little jury rig solutions for this, but the fact that these come in the box with the slider, I think is pretty great. trying to go with a really moody look for this scene. It's gonna be very dark and just to get a bit of extra texture, we're gonna use a smoke machine to sort of give the, the air a little bit more texture. All right, so we finally figured out how to get the smoke machine working. It comes with this amazing remote, which makes me feel like a 1950s spy. You just fire up the smoke. So I'm just trying to knock down the light behind this curtain a little bit. So trusty shower curtain to the rescue yet again. My favorite brand of shower curtain is the cheapest translucent one on Amazon. Okay, so we just finished up with our slider shots and I gotta say this thing worked great. It's not perfect. If you're using it at speed, it makes a really weird noise. I don't know how to describe it other than it's like C-3PO playing the flute. It might be a problem if you wanted to use this slider on interviews, but at the same time, it's only really noticeable when it's going super fast. So you wouldn't normally do that in an interview setting anyways. The app works great. 
Uh, it's very simple to set up. These support legs mean that we never had issues with the ball head tilting under the weight. And overall, for the price, what I need, uh, I think this is a great thing. I'm gonna hold on to it and it's gonna be my slider. So we're coming down to one of our last scenes and it's gonna be Jose in his surfing workshop room. Just doing some routine maintenance on the boards. It's a great contrasty look with this window behind it, but it's just a little too bright. So again, trusty shower curtain. Yeah, that looks much better. I don't think we need the key light at all. I mean, I think it's gonna be fine. There's gonna be detail. I, I, I like the idea that it's like a little moody, a little more contrasty. This isn't blowing out now with the shower curtain. Perfect clap. So Eros is uh, shooting stills right now uh, for thumbnails and sort of movie posters. And I am trying to keep the dog away from him. Come here, Zoe. It's not working that well. Zoe, come here. <laughs> Taking five to scratch this dog. <laughs> Looks really happy. We are pretty much wrapped. We're just packing up today mostly. It was an amazing shoot. I had a really great time. I think it's a super powerful story. In a couple of months or so, I can't wait to share it with all of you. Before we go, I just wanted to wrap up with a few last minute points about the whole experience. I think there's a lot of learning lessons here. And the first one would be, especially if you're starting out, stay local, I can't stress that enough. We had a $5,000 budget, which is pretty micro. Uh, I know it is a lot of money, but the last shoot I was on was a million dollars an episode. So this is a, a, a small budget. Next I'd say, and probably the most important thing here is to look for deeper themes, because even though this is a story about surfing on the surface, it's really not about surfing, it's a love story. It's about what community and, and other people can help you overcome and how you can do almost impossible seeming things if you have the right people around you. The next thing I wanna stress is how you don't need that much gear. I feel like all YouTube filmmaking people kind of say this and it's easy enough to say when I have an FX9 and a, you know, Sackler Flowtech tripod and all this, you know, cinema lenses and all this stuff, but it makes sense that I have that stuff. I'm a full-time professional documentary cinematographer, so those are work tools for me. Because at the end of the day, we filmed this whole thing mainly with one camera, one key light, and a few audio packs. We had other tools, but those were the main components. The other tools made the job easier and probably refined the product a little bit, but they weren't essential to the story. The last thing I wanted to stress is how important pre-production is because when you're working with small budgets and tight timeframes, you can't just show up somewhere and wait for something to happen in front of you. We knew more or less, I'd say probably 90% of the, the scenes or the beats that we were, we were going for before we got here. And so we were able to put things on a schedule. And when we first met Jose, we were able to say, this is what we wanna do on such and such a day. Does that work for you? Uh, and that's only possible with pre-planning. Before I start packing, uh, I just wanted to take a second and say thank you to AOD for making this whole project happen. I love that Mark and Michael are spending their own money to fund films. I think that's really cool. AOD is doing really well as it is and they would be well within their rights to just keep running the courses. They have been, but they're putting their money where their mouth is and actually funding films and that's very unique and really cool. So thanks guys. So I just wanted to take a second and introduce Richard who is an AOD filmmaker and has been doing all the BTS content for this shoot. We were just talking a second ago and he told me that he had just gone to an AOD members meetup and there were like 15 or 16 people there. I haven't honestly taken that much advantage of the AOD community. Did you just want to take a second and tell me a bit about your experience with the AOD community? We're meeting up every month. It's a bunch of uh, filmmakers from all walks of life with 
found their way to this film school. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, you know, I know AOD prides itself on this sense of community. And so, yeah, I just wanted to point out that it is real. All right, so packing up the tripod, I really do want to say that I think this is a great system. After having getting it set up properly and using this thing for a few days, it really is great. It does make your life a lot easier. It takes a second to get set up, but once you do, 100%, it is the easiest to use and most versatile documentary tripod that I know of. Very meticulously. Packed, as you can see. It's funny that after all the packing content, I think that's gonna be in this BTS series. This is how we wrap it up with me just shoving my dirty stuff into this duffel bag. No organization at all. Don't be like me. Thanks to my friend Sasha to Julian, who is a Red Bull rock climber. If you don't know how she is, who she is, she's an absolute beast. She runs an energy bar company called Send Bars. She sent us a whole bunch of these things down. We've been eating them the entire shoot. Anyways, I'm not here to sell energy bars. They're just really good. And then thank you, Sasha, for hooking us up because we ate. This is the last one. We ate all of them. Thank you. All right, that's the end of this series for now. When I get deeper into the edit, I'm gonna to put together another video on how I approach the post-production side of things. But for now, I hope that look at the documentary production process gave you some ideas for your own work. The film itself is gonna premiere on the AOD YouTube channel in a month or so, so keep your eye open for that one. So if the fundamental idea of this whole series was to put the AOD methods to the test and let you guys know if I still thought it was the best documentary filmmaking option on the internet, what do I think after the last four days of shooting? The short answer is yes. Yes, I do still think it's the best choice, especially since adding on module two, it's just the most comprehensive online course out there when it comes to documentaries specifically, and it's hands down the most well-rounded course that I've seen. The advice is spot on the whole way through in my opinion, and even though I do a few things a little differently here and there, the methods they share will 100% keep you on the right track. AOD covers everything from story development all the way through to the final export, and in my opinion, it emphasizes the things that matter the most along the way. And now that the AOD community seems to be growing so quickly, the course also helps create a community and a network, which was the main advantage of traditional film schools in the past. Like Richard said earlier, he went to a meetup and there were 16 people there, which is crazy and I think it's totally comparable to what you'd get in a film school class. So whether you're new to documentaries or you're ready to take your filmmaking to the next level, I honestly don't think anyone does it better right now. The only drawback that I can see now at this point is the price because let's face it, it's not a cheap course especially if you want to sign up for multiple modules. But at the end of the day, it's a fraction of what you'd pay for a film degree, so it's all really relative. If your plan is to keep filmmaking more as a strictly casual hobby, you might not need something quite so comprehensive. But if you're even considering going to film school or you want to take your documentary filmmaking really seriously, I think you'd want to check this out to see if the extra money might not be better spent actually funding projects. That's no knock on film school, it's just something to think about. And like I said, there's a link in the description to get the course at a discount, so feel free to use it and hopefully take a bit of the sting out of the price. Thanks for coming with me on that one. I personally had a great time. If you like that series and want more BTS content like this, let me know and I'll plan some more shoots soon. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. See ya.